Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I've gotten a lot of questions regarding how to break down offshore spots, how to rule out unproductive fishing areas and put anglers into areas that will increase their success on the water. And I've got a very simple formula that no matter what electronics you're using will help you find areas that are gonna be more productive faster and allow you to be more productive and efficient on the water guys the system is very simple especially for this time of year and that's what i want to help you guys with because this is something that i i do think is probably the most difficult thing to do in the sport of fishing and that's to find fish offshore it's not super easy to do especially if you don't have a lot of electronic experience if you've got all the, the great electronic tools out there it can be a lot easier to do but you don't have to have it and, and if you just take the simple approach that i'm going to provide you it will really break down lakes very quickly for you and allow you to find those fish without having some of the high-tech equipment uh, before i do get into that i do want to remind you guys that uh, i've been working with a fish the moment lately we've got a lot of really cool content coming out i do lake breakdowns for them uh, the link for those are in the description of my video where you can get help on breaking down your local lakes but there's also some other uh, content that's going to be coming out. There's going to be some playbooks that are going to be like full overviews of certain techniques based on seasons and areas of the country. And Miles Berghoff is going to be doing that as well as Kyle Cordiana. They're going to be helping out with those too. So go check out their YouTube channels. They produce some really good content. That's uh, Sonar Fishing is Miles Berghoff. He's been on my channel before. Kyle Cordiana Fishing has produced a, a ton of tournament content over the years. He's one of the most knowledgeable anglers in the sport and has had a fantastic year this year. He just wrapped up the title championship with a top 10. Very, very good fisherman. So check out his channel as well. Give them a subscribe. You know Randy Blockett's working with them. If you don't follow him already, you might as well because he produces a lot of good content. Everything from... Uh, you know, good fishing tips to just talking about very hot topic buttons, which some people agree with them, some don't agree, agree with them. But Randy's been around in the sport for 40 years, 50 years, and has seen the sport change. So I think he's got very valuable opinions, whether you agree or disagree. It's a great channel. Obviously, Fish the Moment too. Subscribe to their channel if you haven't done that as well. With that, I'm also going to announce that I'm starting to do one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons through Fish the Moment. You can sign up for a one-hour long phone call where we can talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. If you, if you want to, we want to pull up a map and go through your home lake, we can do that. If you've got topic or certain questions on topics, you can do that as well. Uh, so I'll be doing that. You can sign up for one-on-one -on -one calls with Randy Blockett. Uh, Miles Berghoff will have those as well, as well as Kyle Cordiana set up. So the link for that I'll put in the video description too. So if that's something that interests you, you can look for that further. But uh, a lot of really good information coming out of the Fish the Moment team and the page. It's, it's exciting to see a bunch of guys that really just want to help anglers catch more fish and to share the love of the sport that we have. So go check that out. Uh, and a lot of this information that I'm going to talk about in this video comes from stuff I've learned from Fish the Moment as well and comes from learning from other anglers. But when it comes to offshore fishing, guys, there are a couple of like hard, fast rules that you want to look at first. So if you've got a lake that's very deep and you've got a bunch of humps, a bunch of points, a bunch of cool break lines, what you want to do to narrow out 80% of that water right off the bat is find the thermocline. The thermocline will, will easily show up based on uh, either your electronics, you can see, you can see the thermocline itself, or just the depth that the bait fish are going to be setting up. So if you've got a lake with a bunch of bluegill or a perch or shad and you're out graphing around, you know, using just your 2D sonar and you're seeing clouds of bait that are at 18 feet, chances are good that thermocline is going to be, say, in that 18 to 20 foot range. If they're down in 30 feet, that's where they're going to be. Now, what you want to do is once you identify the depth of that thermocline, draw a line at that depth. Anything under that depth, you can write off. There potentially could be fish that are deeper than the thermocline, but they're most likely not gonna be there. They're most likely gonna be at the depth of the bait that they're keying in on at that certain depth. And it doesn't matter if it's shad, it doesn't matter if it's bluegill, it doesn't matter if it's perch, alewife, cisco, that's the depth that a lot of the fish are gonna be at. 
So once you've just cut off that thermocline depth, anything under say 20 feet, if that's where you think the thermocline is, is off limits. Don't even worry about it. Just completely block it out. At that point, the next thing you wanna do is find any place where your contour lines hit that thermocline. What I mean by that is if you have a point, wherever that point drops off past 20 feet is going to be the key spot. That 20 foot mark is an area you wanna concentrate on, say 15 to 20, if the thermocline's at 20. The reason for that is that's where the bait's gonna be, it, that's where the bass are gonna be to try to ambush the bait. So not, they may not necessarily be relating strictly to the, the bottom itself on that point, but that's gonna be your key depth for strikes. If you've got fish that are on the point, that's great. You can concentrate on the point. If they're not on the point, they're gonna be suspended at that 20 foot depth off of the point. Now, generally speaking, you will have fish that suspend out in the middle of nowhere, completely nomadic fish that are chasing the bait fish around at that 20 foot level. Those are the fish that I'd recommend not trying to, to catch right away. You can run into them, but they could be gone in an hour. They could be gone in a the day. They're not gonna be in that same place because they're completely chasing the, the forage species. Ideally, in my opinion, what you wanna do is look at the contour lines on that lake and find those areas that, that are hitting the thermocline. So if you've got a hump that comes up to say 10 feet right in the middle of the lake, the, the key spot will be where the thermocline hits that hump. But once you've identified that hump or that point or that break line, the next key spot that you're gonna look for is some sort of isolated cover on that point right where the thermocline hits. So it could be a brush pile, could be a boulder, it could be a rock vein, it could be a standing timber. Whatever it is, that's a key isolated piece of cover right at that juncture of the contour line and your thermocline. That's a place that the fish is gonna to wanna to hold on to and they'll use as an ambush point. Very easy to do. If you don't have isolated cover like that, like a lot of lakes up here in the North Country have a lot of sand drops, uh, have a lot of small rock, but not necessarily boulders. What you're gonna to wanna to do then is find the deepest dropping contour line. So if you have a point and on one side of the point is much steeper dropping than the other side, generally speaking, those fish are gonna to wanna to use the steeper sloping contour lines because it acts more as a wall. So if you have, if you have a point that's dropping off like this, the thermocline hits right here. If the fish chase shad into this uh, shallower dropping contour line, the, the forge can, can disperse a lot easier. If you have a steep contour line on the point and the fish chase forage into it, at that point, the forage can do one of things. They're gonna either go right, they're gonna go left, they're gonna go up. Generally, not, they're not gonna go under the, the thermocline. So what it does is it creates a wall which allows those fish to chase the bait fish into the wall and it makes them easier for the fish to, to capture. I mean, it's, it's not that hard to do to find these spots. You really just wanna say, okay, I'm gonna line up everything. Thermocline, where does the ground hit the thermocline, meaning your contour lines, and then find either isolated cover at that depth where the thermocline's at, or the steepest sloping breaks on that thermocline. If you look for those guys, you will narrow down your lake to probably 95% of the water will be, will be just pushed to the side. I'm not saying that's unproductive. In fact, a lot of the spots that you can find in that 90 or 95% of the lake that you just wrote off could be some of those secret honey holes that get a lot less pressure, but they get a lot less pressure because those spots are a lot harder to find. If you look for just that five or 10% of the water, that has the criteria that I just pointed out, those will be high percentage spots that fish routinely use during the summer period and you will just have made offshore fishing a lot simpler. Not hard to do, you can sit down with a map, you can do it with your 2D sonar. Sonar, obviously, if you have forward facing sonar or if you have side imaging, those are things that are gonna help, but you don't need it to do this. You can break down a lake to a few handful of spots pretty much before you even get to the lake. I mean, even if you don't know exactly what depth the thermocline's at, you can pretty much assume 
that depending on the lake that you're on and the clarity of the water, that that thermocline is probably going to be between 15 and 30 feet. So if you have a few a few minutes before you're heading out to the lake, you can still narrow your down down your search to that point until you, you're actually on the water to find the thermocline. But those are really important tips, guys. Don't let offshore fishing scare you. It's a lot easier done than what you would think. It does take some time to really figure it out and hone your skills, but that's pretty much anything in life, right? I mean, as long as you put some effort into it, you're gonna be able to figure it out. And those are the easy tips that I just gave you that you can apply to really breaking down offshore structure. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and stay tuned guys, I'll have another video coming out tomorrow for you.